Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day. My friends, as we gather here in this place, we come to give thanks for the life of our sister, Marion Bash Reed. We come to remember Marion in the fullness of life and all the ways in which we've shared in our journey. Each one of us are unique beings. We are the story and the journey of our lives. And as we gather here today, we come to remember Marion's journey amongst us. We come to give thanks for that journey, but also to commend her to God's eternal rest and peace, giving thanks that for Marion, all human pain and illness are conquered. We come to pray that she finds reunion with all whom she has loved who have gone before her. And here today in the cemetery, as we lay to rest the ashes of Elizabeth too, we remember and give thanks for Elizabeth's life and their journey together. We come in the presence of God who declares to us that death is not an end but a new beginning. We come to celebrate the life and times. Hear these words from Ecclesiastes, words that are given to us to remind us that life is a journey of different times coming together. The writer of Ecclesiastes puts it this way. For everything it's see, for everything it's season, and for every activity under heaven it's time. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to abstain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time for silence and a time for speech, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything to suit its time. Amen and thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. The different times of Mario's life are what brings us here today. The times where we shared with her in country dancing, the times where we played badminton with her, the times we remember her from her job, particularly as a gifted teacher of mathematics, the different times, different experiences, but one journey. And we give thanks to God today that we have been part of that journey, part of Marion's story. And as we come to commend her to God's rest and peace, we bring our own thoughts, our own times, our own memories. The psalmist strikes these words. One thing I ask of the Lord is the one thing that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Let us take a moment to come before God in prayer. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. Lord of life and conqueror of death, you are our help in every time of trouble. In the presence of death, O oh God, you offer comfort to those who mourn. Lord, we bow before you now, believing that you bear our grief and share our sense of loss. Give us grace to worship you and to trust in your goodness and mercy. And assure us that because Christ lives, so we shall live also. Father, as we come to give thanks for Marion's life, we come aware of our sense of loss and grief at her passing. We pray that as we gather here today, we may find comfort and strength through your grace, that your love may be in all our hearts. Loving God in our pain, we remember with sorrow how we have failed one another, and brought grief to your heart through our failure. In your kindness, forgive our past sins, O Lord. Set us free from guilt and make us strong to live our lives in love. God of grace and power, send your Holy Spirit among us that we may hear your promises, hear your words and know them to be true and so receive the comfort and peace they bring through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to share and hear now from some words from Valerie Wells as we come to hear from Marion's niece as a tribute to Marion today. 
I'd like to invite Valerie to come forward and share with us. I want to use the lectern there, Marion. Firstly, thank you all for coming to remember Marion, her friends, colleagues, neighbours, and those who helped her, both at home and in the final few months of her life when she needed more care. To those of you here and following the live feed, and those who will be watching the recording. This tribute was composed together jointly by my sister Celia and myself. Our mother, Helen Reed, was Marion's half-sister. Helen lived at Broombury Drive from the age of three until she left Scotland to work in the civil service in London, age 19. Helen's mother had died when she was age 15, her father remarried, and Marion was born when Helen was age 23. The house remained, of course, in the family and was Marion's home until very recently. So although Marion was our aunt, we all felt more like contemporaries. She was always Marion rather than aunt or auntie Marion. We have many family memories of times with Marion. She visited us in our family home in Portsmouth where we grew up. Recently, she was talking about remembering playing in our garden with us. We visited Marion and her mother Mary and Gurek on holiday and we have a, a photograph that both Celia and I recall well, showing us both as children sitting perched on the railings over uh, in, in Gurek, overlooking the water towards Helensborough. The railings are still in situ, but painted a different colour now. Excursions on the paddle steamers with Marion and her aunt Lizzie, our great aunt, were another highlight of our holidays together. They both thoroughly enjoyed sailing on the steamers. Stranraa was another holiday destination as Aunt Lizzie lived there during her career teaching maths. We enjoyed family evenings with Marion and Aunt Lizzie playing cards together. I particularly remember the fun of the card game Happy Families. Celia also remembers her delight at being allowed to go on her own, aged about eight or nine, to the nearby railway bridge to watch the steam trains. Marion thoroughly enjoyed many holidays in Stranra with Aunt Lizzie. More recently, Celia, her husband Nick, and I met Marion in York for a long weekend. She was so interested in all the history of the Minster, the Guilds, and the Guildhall. She had such a lively and inquiring mind. After that, we either travelled to Glasgow to meet Marion, where she delighted in showing us the parks and gardens of the city, and then in more recent years, we would come to Gurek. We would meet for lunch, and the last time, she was concerned that Celia and I both had a good view overlooking the water, and she pointed out to us the various steamers and their destinations. She truly enjoyed Gurek and the Clyde. Marion's aunt Lizzie retired to Gurek and lived in Ashman Gardens. They were great friends and Marion would call in to aunt Lizzie many days on her way home from school calling out, it's only me, as she entered with her own key and taking aunt Lizzie her shopping and I'm sure having a chat. Telephone calls with Marion were long and discursive with Marion doing much of the talking and in the last few years, inevitably, we were sorting out Scottish and Westminster politics. She took a keen interest in everything. Marion was a lively and active individual, enjoying the outdoors and holidays, both in Scotland and elsewhere. She also enjoyed Scottish country dancing up until around the time that she retired. She was also an avid reader of crime novels and enjoyed crosswords and puzzles. She enjoyed a lifelong circle of friends from her days at Glasgow University where she studied maths. And we remember her mentioning how valuable these friendships were to her. We have some of those friends here today and also some watching the live feed. Marion's passion and was for maths. And even very recently, 
she was reiterating this passion for the subject. One of the staff at Balthusa Court Care Home, with whom she struck up some rapport, asked about her career, and they mentioned that they hated maths. Marion's reply, I can hear her now, how can you not like maths? Marion had a long and distinguished career in teaching. She first taught in Paisley, and then went on to become head of maths at Greenock Academy. She will have touched and influenced the lives of many over the years. And in fact, the person who recently moved in next door to Marion in Broombury Drive remembers Marion having taught her. Marion grew up with good, kind neighbours around her, many of whom were lifelong, valued friends. And as her health deteriorated and she became less able, they were able to help her with shopping and assistance. Also, support from home helps and others meant that she was able to stay in her own home until the last five months of her life, when she realised that she needed more care. We remember Marion for the many happy times we shared with her, her generosity, her loyal and valued friendships, the lives of many she influenced during her dedicated teaching career, and her strong sense of family background. She maintained the name Vass from her parental grandmother's family in her signature, and we remember her for her love of Guruk and the Clyde. It is fitting that she is to be laid to rest in the family grave with her father David Rass, Vass Reed and her mother Mary Reed, and with the ashes of her aunt Elizabeth Vass Reed in Guruk Cemetery. May she rest in peace. All our lives are unique journeys, unique stories. There's not many people that can say their whole life has been lived in one house, right through their journey. A quite unique experience. And as we gather here and remember these different experiences at different times, and as we remember that Marion in the fullness of life, we give thanks for that journey that we've been privileged to share in. We're going to hear now a reading from the great pastoral psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd, and we were led in a reading by Celia, Marion's niece. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. There can be no other fitting reading this morning and this afternoon than the 23rd Psalm when we think of Marion. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We give thanks for her independence, her sense of self-sufficiency. We give thanks for all she was and experienced and had in the journey of her life. We're going to take a few moments now to just reflect ourselves in our own memories and our own times of Marion's journey. We're going to do so as we hear the music to the hymn, Eternal Father Strong to Save, 
which is inspired by Psalm 107. And Marion, one of Marion's great passions was for the RNLI, something that she liked to support, the lifeboat, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. And so as we take a moment to reflect, we hear a few verses of Eternal Father, strong to save. <laughs> sharing with us in our tribute to Marion, it struck me that I would be one of the people that Marion would have trouble with because I too don't ever get mass at all, I must confess. And it's important, however, the friendships that Marion had through her life, many as we've heard were created and sustained through her time at Glasgow University, a very formative period for anyone in their life. And we're going to hear now from Margaret Tyndall, one of uh, Marion's lifelong friends. I'd like to invite Margaret to come forward and share some words with us. Margaret. Marion showed when her heart lay through her charitable donations and her will especially to her alma mater, Glasgow University. We were there at the same time, but in different faculties. We met through a mutual friend, Joan Duncan. I think that the actual meeting was in 1970, when we went on a holiday with friends to Austria and the Passion Play at Oberammergau. After that, Marion and I enjoyed many holidays together, Recently, I asked her about memories of special ones. We did an island hopping tour from Skye right down to Barra. I'm a McNeil of Barra. And she remained fascinated by the Callanish stones in Lewis. She was also delighted to meet someone from Greenock at the Dun Carloway Broch. 
Ida Cairn Terrier, who absolutely adored Marion, and the feeling was mutual. She was a very kissy dog, and I have videos of them meeting each other, Marion bending down happily to receive kisses from Pepper. I love to watch Marion happily chasing Pepper round the bedroom to retrieve her socks, which Pepper had taken from her case. She loved Tobermory and Calgary Bay, a heaven on earth. Marion was an active person. She enjoyed tennis, badminton, country dancing. When she was fit and able, she went on walking holidays in the Lake District. As you've heard, she enjoyed puzzles, and she even tackled puzzles when she was in St Margaret's Court. I used to give her the Glasgow Herald crossword, and she also enjoyed the one in the Greenock Telegraph. She challenged herself with Sudoku and the more difficult Kakuro. Marion, as you heard, took an honours degree in mathematics at Glasgow University, followed by teacher training at Jordan Hill College and then John Nielsen Institute in Paisley. After that, to Greenock Academy, where she ultimately became principal teacher of maths. She was a very loyal colleague and sought the best for all her pupils. And she enjoyed meeting other colleagues at official meetings. And every year she marked hundreds of exam papers. Marion Brown and Aileen Gilmer were particular friends. And Marion in particular enjoyed visiting Greenock to see the luxury liners. Marion's garden gave her real enjoyment and as she sat on the ground weeding, she took pleasure in chatting to neighbours over the hedge. We thoroughly enjoyed the Glasgow Garden Festival and the one in Gateshead and Ebervale in Wales. A group of six of us, all from the same, same intake at Glasgow University, met regularly for lunch. Four mathematicians and two of us from the arts faculty. Her heart was in Guruk, and being beside the Clyde was a source of both pride and pleasure. She followed marine arrivals and departures in the Greenock Telegraph, and we used to go down to watch the huge liners sail away. She liked to stay till they were actually out of sight. The two tall ships events locally were hugely popular. She and Sheila Ferguson shared a dinghy and enjoyed sailing together. Geology was another interest and she had a collection of semi-precious stones. Sadly, ill health dogged her later years and day-to-day -day living as her kidneys began to fail. Her close friends, mainly maths teachers, sadly died before her and so Marion became increasingly isolated especially after the death of her lifelong friend, Ruth Jimison. The families were near neighbours, and together they enjoyed celebrating Christmas and birthdays. Recently, Marion required care in her own home, and eventually in Balclutha Court Nursing Home. By this time, not only was she very unwell and increasingly weak, but she was very depressed. However, her face lit up and she smiled as she recalled how the activities coordinator, Karen, had given her a wee whiskey, and I saw that the real Marion was still there. She is at peace now, and I hope as she lay in her room, she still had visions of the Callanish Stones and Calgary Bay, her heaven on earth. In life, she epitomised Greenock Academy's motto, Hinc vera virtus. From this place comes true worth. Indeed, a person of true worth, Marion Bass Reed. Tonight we'd like to invite Valerie forward to share with us in prayer. (coughs) 
This is a prayer that has resonated with Celia and with myself since our school days. It was part of our assemblies when we were growing up at high school. It's also a prayer that clearly resonated with Marion. I'm reading from the card that I found in her bedside table at Balclutha Court. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. As we gather together and share, we bring our own memories and thoughts of Marion to this place. Many, no doubt, you will have been stirred to hear in the parts of the story that we've heard from her life from Valerie and from Margaret. During our prayers, we want to silence, and in that silence, I'd ask you to commend Marion to God's eternal rest and peace. And also, we take time to remember the residents and staff at Balclutha for the love and care shown to Marion in the latter few days and also St Margaret's before that as we remember the residents and staff of these places. You bring your own memories, your own times, your own experiences of Marion's life. Maybe you remember her through teaching in the school. Maybe you remember her as a pupil. Maybe you're here today as a friend, as a neighbour. In whatever way you have shared in our life, you bring your moment, your time, your experience of our journey. And together we give thanks and celebrate her life and commend her to God's eternal rest and peace. So let us come before God. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to break the power of death and to bring life and immortality to light through the gospel. We thank you that Christ shared our life, took upon himself our death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all people. Lord, look not on us, but on us is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Bring us safely through the judgment to the joy and peace of your presence. Eternal God, you hold all souls in life and we praise you today for those who have shared this earthly life with us and have entered into eternal life with you now. Especially today, we thank you for the life of our sister, Marion Vaz Reed. We thank you for all that Marion shared in the journey of her life, for all that made Marion special to each one of us gathered here today, for all you gave Marion and accomplished in Marion's life, for all that Marion meant to those who knew her and loved her. We come to remember with gratitude and thanksgiving, O oh Lord, the inquiring mind that Marion was blessed with, that ability to solve mathematical problems, finding beauty and wonder in the numbers and the complexity of the equations laid before her. We thank you for her skill in teaching others, sharing her passion and wonder of maths. We thank you for her service in so many schools and the number of young lives that will have been changed through her teaching. We thank you for her passions, the things she enjoyed and shared in her dancing, in Scottish country dancing, playing badminton and tennis. We thank you for the love that she found in reading, particularly getting engrossed in a crime fiction novel, or finding herself taking time to do the Herald crossword or Sudoku or puzzles. We thank you for all that she meant to each one of us. For the time spent in holiday, away in National Trust holidays, trips around Scotland, finding the beauty and wonder of this place and some of the mysteries unexplained as part of them. We thank you, Lord, for all that we experienced with Mary. In a moment of silence, Lord, we remember her. We remember her each in our own way. We remember her as a friend, as a neighbour, as a colleague. 
especially remember through the reality of our family, we bring before you the family today and commend them to you. In the silence, Lord, hear our prayers now, as together we remember Mary and commend her to your eternal rest and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear these, our prayers. Loving God, we thank you that for Marion, all pain and suffering are ended and that death itself is conquered. Help us to release Marion into your care and keeping in the confidence that all life finds its fulfillment with you in the joy of your everlasting kingdom. We pray that she finds reunion with all whom she has loved who have gone before her, especially our own parents and family members, including our aunt, Aunt Lizzie, who was so important to her. We commend them to you and her at this time, O oh Lord. We remember her family today, those who will miss her most of all, and we bring before you her nieces, Valerie and Cecile and Celia and Nick today. We ask you to bless them and comfort them and all who are part of the wider family. Grant that they may cast every care on you and know the consolation, peace and strength of your love. Father, as we go from this place, and as we go to the cemetery beyond, so we go to share in a time of reflection and remembrance as we lay Marion's body to the ground. We thank you that you blessed, her, blessed us with her journey and with the story of her life. We remember and ask your blessing too to be upon those who were there at the latter days. We pray and offer our prayers especially for the residents and staff at St. Margaret's and Buckluther Court for the love and care shown to Marion in these difficult latter days. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness and consideration. Father, you are the God of all comfort, the God of all grace, and the God of all peace. Draw near to us, we pray, that as we continue our own journey, we may know that we are blessed and that we may re reunite, we remain united with all who have gone before us through that gift of love. And as we feel the grief of loss today, we thank you that in that grief, we pay the price of love itself. And for that love that molds and shapes and give, uh, gives our lives meaning, we thank you and praise you. Lord, hear these our prayers we ask. In and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. My friends, as we go from this place, we go to Guruk Cemetery to, to uh, inter Marion and also uh, Elizabeth's ashes, and you're more than welcome to join us there. But I thank you on behalf of the family for your presence here today, knowing that you thought so much of Marion, that you gave the most important thing you have, some of your time to be here and to remember her journey will indeed be a comfort and strength to the family and all that lies ahead. We're going to close by singing together the hymn, the hymn Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon and dwell within your heart this day, bring you comfort and strength in your journey and in the lives of all whom you share your journey with and your story with, now and forevermore. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd ask you to please remain upstanding. Family would be delighted to invite you back to the Beacon Arms Centre. 